33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santo Show that you are tuned into. We are here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern Time, 12 to 3 Pacific. And, of course, uh, you can check us out on the podcast of the program coming up at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.30 Pacific. Our next guest and final guest of the week is, uh, as usual, he has been here for uh, several years in this time slot. We are so excited always to end the week with our good friend, and Mr. Mark Taylor Canfield, the executive director of uh, Democracy Watch News. Of course, a uh, great musician himself, the renaissance man of the Jeff Santo Show. And here, uh, live from a, uh, uh, a studio, a sleepy studio where Mark was uh, all night doing great music, is our great friend, MTC, Mark Taylor Canfield. How are you, sir? <laughs> Great, Jeff, in the studio as usual, uh, sleep deprived uh, as usual. But this time, because of not because of music so much, but because I, I also do some creative writing. I'm trying to do more and more uh, science fiction short story writing. So I had a piece that was due, and I had to stay up all night to finish editing it and, and get it submitted. But in the meantime, we've got you know tickets at uh, Starbucks uh, cafes in Seattle where the workers are getting the cold shoulder from the corporate headquarters here. We got Joe Biden on his way uh, to visit Seattle on Earth Day and April 20th, the same day that. Oh, we just uh, lost our good friend, uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Taylor Canfield. Uh, hopefully we can uh, get him back quickly. Uh, it has been a day of a lot of uh, drop phone lines, so hopefully we can get him back uh, momentarily uh, here on the uh, Jeff Santos show. Uh, again, folks, you know, one of the things that I think is, is so important is that, and I think um, Joe Sandberg has said this, and, and, uh, and many of our guests have said this, that if we don't connect the dots um, with um, what people need and want, uh, understanding the concern of rising prices with with gas and, and, and food prices and so forth. The president and the Democrats uh, writ large have to connect the dots uh, on how to move uh, the agenda forward. They have to uh, prescribe benefits for these folks, whether that means another check, round of checks, whether that means discounts on electric cars if they want to pe- buy people to have electric cars, whether it is a scenario of, of taking more public transportation. You got to do a lot of different things, not just opening up oil leases. Uh, so you know, there you go, um, and that's uh, that is where uh, we are at right now. And I think it's really important uh, that we can uh, make that happen. Um, we are again trying to uh, reconnect with our good friend uh, MTC, and uh, hopefully we can uh, make that happen uh, momentarily. In the meantime, uh, let's go, well, actually, let's go back to Seattle and talk to our good friend, uh, Mr. Uh, MTC. Uh, Mark, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I don't know how much of that got on. Did you hear anything I had to say when when I actually jumped on there? (laughs) No, we we definitely got uh, the opening about how you are uh, sleep deprived, not because of uh, of music, but uh, of some of the other events you've been attending and so forth. Uh, so we got cut off there. Um, so tell us, um, it's been a very busy uh, day for you, hasn't it? Yeah, and I was just saying that um, actually, Joe Biden is coming, right, to, coming to town for right. for uh, Earth Day to talk about climate change and, and green economy. Uh, we got uh, workers picketing local Starbucks here because they're getting the cold shoulder from the corporate headquarters here in Seattle. And Alice Cooper is going to be here on April 20th as well on Earth Day, uh, performing at the Climate Pledge Arena, the same place that the Kraken has been playing. And the Mariners beat the White Sox 5-1, to one, the fourth straight uh, uh, win um, on opening day at T-Mobile Field here in Seattle. So the Mariners are looking up, and Alice Cooper's in town, so everything's good, right? I guess. Everything's good, right? Your world is is uh, looking up. 
Hey, uh, I, I, I want to talk to you about uh, the lead story of our day here. We spoke with Julia Rock of, uh, of The Lever earlier um, about uh, the uh, endorsement of Miss Brown, um, and I want to get to that uh, in, in, in a second. But I also, uh, you know, wanted to point out uh, good on Jay Inslee, you know, who ran uh, for president on the issue of the environment to have the current president of the United States, uh, Joe Biden, um, you know, with him here on Earth Day. I think that's uh, that's a great coup for for your governor and. You know, look. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen in 2024, but we could do uh, we could do worse than 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 uh, your governor there in in uh, you know a few miles south there um, in the uh, capital city. Um, so that's great. Um, please uh, give us uh, your analysis here of, and I, I presume this is must pain. Um, Miss Jayapal, a progressive who endorsed Nina last year when she ran, uh, to see this vote come out. What are you hearing um, from your uh, sources within Jayapal world and and progressive world, which Seattle is in so many ways? When this uh, this uh, you know CDC endorsement, uh, CPC, Progressional Progressive Caucus, came down. Well, as I said to you in my text message, apparently the progressive tent, the quote progressive unquote tent, is now so large in the United States Congress that it has these gaping holes in it that allows that right? corporate, corporate, uh, corporatists like Brown to join the caucus, cong- join the caucus, and then get endorsements instead of our good friend Nina Turner, who we've all known for years and has always been a great. Uh, advocate for progressive causes. So I don't know what's going on in the minds of my friend uh, Pramila Jayapal or Mark Pocan or Jeremy Raskin. I think uh, they're they're barking up the wrong tree. They've made a big mistake. And uh, one of the things that I was thinking is, one, I have heard some pushback um, from Shama Swan, our city council member, on this issue. So okay. uh, she's trying to call Democrats into account for... Uh, not holding true to these progressive causes. Uh, and also, um, we've got this attitude um, amongst the, the Democratic Party that, you know, Bernie Sanders endorsed Nina Turner. So uh, what does this say for the progressive caucus itself and its ability to uh, stick together and speak as one voice when you have uh, the dissension being caused by these endorsements of corporate uh, Democrats, and let's be clear, um, Brown got money from some Trump supporters and Trump donors. So, uh, unfortunately, she reminds me a little bit like our mayor, Bruce Harrell, here in Seattle, also somebody I've known for years, but, you know, he also uh, got some billionaire money from Trump supporters during his campaign as a, as a quote, progressive, unquote, uh, Democrats, you know. Or, so, you know, it causes, it's causing a lot of problems. Uh, people are speaking out. Um, and I hope that it doesn't cause a split in the Democratic Party or amongst the progressives themselves. But when you uh, do something like this, you can be sure that uh, it means one thing, that apparently we as progressives don't have enough clout or enough popular support or enough you know, uh, political power to actually hold our progressive candidates accountable for supporting progressives. So that says something about us and our need to organize and and get the word to our elected representatives that, you know what, if you want our vote, then you need to stand up for progressive candidates and progressive causes. And if you're going to go towards the corporate Democrat uh, part of the ticket, then I'm sorry, we may lose our support. That's why a lot of people support Bernie Sanders, because he refuses to take the corporate money. So there you go, Jeff. That's a lot. I know I was up all night writing a science fiction story called Alpha One that actually um, has some political elements in it as well. I'm trying to do more creative writing uh, these days as well as my journalism. Um, so I was thinking about this last night as I was writing. What would Senator Bernie Sanders say in a situation where his own um, so, so-called friends in the Progressive Caucus are, uh, are deciding against him and what he thinks is in the best interest of the party and the country? 
No doubt. And and then these folks are, uh, I, I think a lot of them are not really very progressive. And uh, they, they vote because, you know, they think that they got to support uh, the the incumbent in a sense. And that uh, that's, you know, that's the politics of yesterday. Uh, and frankly, we need to get uh, people to understand that there are a lot of people that deserve to be in Congress and you, you deserve to be reelected. And there are folks that have been instituted uh, by uh, politics of Mr. Clyburn and the Clinton crowd who despise Nina Turner and uh, and that's what occurred in that situation. Interesting on, on Sawant, is there a possibility and we've talked about this before um, um, you know Mark, is that could they uh, and, the, and the Seattle and Washington State politics, could uh, Jayapal be considered for a U.S. Senate seat which would open the door for Miss Omar in Minnesota, maybe to be the chair of the Progressive Caucus, and and, and you know, just listen to me on this one, Miss Sawant may be running for that congressional seat. Um, I'm just wondering if if you know uh, if, if people are looking. Well, you know, maybe maybe we need to put uh, you know our good our good and very effective leader in the progressive movement is Jayapal into a different slot. You know, both Mari and Cantwell have been there for a good 30 years, I believe. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe there's some time here and some moving spaces and give a, a bigger uh, agenda to uh, Miss Sawant. Well, as you know, Jeff, uh, politics is all about opportunity. So when those seats open, uh, you know, there's no predicting who's going to jump in. We've had uh, mayoral races uh, here in Seattle where eight or nine independents all joined and split the ticket, you know, running against each other. So who knows what could happen? Uh, there are some Democratic Socialists who have been running for Congress in my state. Um, Shama Sawant, I think, would make an excellent congressional leader. She would definitely be one of the most outspoken and probably be accused of being divisive because she it definitely is not going to hold back. And the fact that she's not uh, completely beholden to the Democratic Party for funding her campaign since she's a Democratic Socialist. I think, you know, she's more of an independent voice and could probably be more like Bernie Sanders and, and get away with saying things that other members of Congress couldn't do. I definitely would not see her standing up um, to endorse somebody like Sherrod Brown for uh, that race because, you know, she is very, very outspoken in terms of her criticism of the Democrats when they're not being true to the, their progressive um, mission, So, especially here in Seattle. So, yeah, she's not going to hold back. She would make an excellent congressperson, I think. Pramila Jayapal would make an excellent senator as well. Um, she, definitely has, uh, she definitely has the qualifications for that and would do a great job, I think. So who knows, Jeff? I mean, you've opened up a possibility there. I know that Shama Sawant is going to have her hands full in Seattle because we have a mayor who I said got some uh, donations from some Trump supporters who also quote, called him, quote, called himself a, quote, progressive, unquote. Um, he's continuing to dismantle uh, houseless camps in Seattle where these what I call economic refugees are living because they can't afford to, to um, have housing in Seattle. Um, the Washington, good news is the Washington State Legislature just approved about $300 million to help deal with homelessness in the state. But $45 million of that is being dedicated to dismantling homeless encampments during major roadways. So you have uh, progressives fighting in Seattle over things like affordable housing. You have um, the Seattle Police Department, which um, is still under a Department of Justice review, by the way, in a, a consent decree. They... Um, in the latest report, uh, we found out that the use of um, excessive force has definitely gone down since the Black Lives Matter protests, you know, where, where they were being very aggressive with protesters. But they, the study still found that there is racial profiling going on, that uh, excessive use of, uh, use of force when it's used is disproportionately used against um, black members of the community and Native American people here. So that's a big concern. Um, and I was surprised to see at least one more conservative TV station actually do an honest job of reporting uh, about that issue today. And, you know, kudos to them because normally they take a right wing slant on everything and are all pro police because everybody here has been demanding um, hiring more police. And I know that Shama Sawant is not going to support that and is going to lead this charge on the part of the city council and the progressive members there 
to reform the police department, to provide uh, affordable housing, to be true to the progressive uh, values that we hold in this city. So um, I don't know, you know, bottom line, I don't know what to say about my friend Pramila Jayapal. I'm not going to apologize for her and this decision to help support Sherrod Brown. I do not support Brown. I've always liked Nina Turner. I think she's a true progressive fighter like like Pramila Jayapal has normally been. And I'm surprised to see this decision um, on the part of the Progressive Caucus. And I don't know um, what the true... Uh, motivation there is except that we know that there is a big corporate influence on the democratic party because of the amount of money that the corporations and their ceos and employees are able to raise for these campaigns so of course there's always going to be that that money trail that people are following and maybe they think sherrod brown is going to win and so they want to be behind a winner chantel chantel i'm sorry chantel well you know what I, I really think that it's going to cause a split on the Progressive Caucus, though. And I would love to hear what the, what the Black Caucus has to say about this as well. I'm sure there's a lot of anger there that, you know, one of their own is being passed over for someone who doesn't really deserve to even wear the label Progressive, let alone be endorsed by the Progressive Caucus, caucus of the U.S. Congress. Well, the problem, of course, is is that there are a lot of conservatives led by Clyburn uh, that are in the Democratic Party and in the Congressional Black Caucus. That was Clyburn who was giving money to Brown right away, and there's no friend of Nina Turner. So that's uh, that's part of the problem, too. But you're right. There probably are some progressives, uh, African-Americans, the Bowmans of the world, uh, the Omars of the world that, that are part of the CBC and you know they they have to be really uh, angered by by what is that exactly happened. We're talking with uh, Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santo Show, and um, you know Earth Day is coming up. And again, I I, I you know applaud uh, Jay Inslee and I applaud the president for going uh, you know to Seattle. You know the the uh, the evergreen and uh, a very leading. Uh, state when it comes to the environment and, and, and global uh, climate change issues. Um, do you feel, and, and I do want to get to some uh, some music uh, uh, thoughts before we roll uh, in, in our seven minutes here left, do you feel that this is an issue that, you know, can bring a lot of young people to Joe Biden, you know, who are, you know, maybe a little bit more skeptical that, you know, they didn't get a lot done on voting rights because Joe Manchin basically was the big uh, was the big uh, blocker, if you might, of that. Uh, they didn't get much done on 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 concerns over uh, police reform, which obviously a lot of people in Seattle are concerned about. What are your thoughts there? Well, after a few more drinks of um, Herba Mate tea, I could probably answer all that. <laughs> I, I am pretty sleep deprived, so I'm sorry if I'm if I'm a little slow today. But That's all I right. feel like progressives in Seattle, and especially young people, have never been perfectly happy, even with their own progressive establishment. You know, they're on the cutting edge of what's happening in the country, and that means that uh, when they look at Joe Biden, they look at him as somebody who's actually right of, of center and is representing Wall Street. They don't see him as somebody that they can trust. However, what, whenever a politician wants to back uh, anything having to do with climate change or green technology and the green economy, I think you'll find a lot of support from young people. It would be really helpful um, in getting out the vote for uh, Democratic Party candidates to really highlight those issues, especially in college towns and places like Seattle where there's a pretty young population of people. Um, they really do uh, think that you know, Greta Thunberg should be Thunberg should be president, not Joe Biden. But it's uh, it's about the future for them. It's not about what's happening right now. They're waiting for their turn. They're standing in line, and they're really frustrated. And I feel like the the, the path has been blocked. And it's kind of like that Bob Dylan song: "The times they are changing." No, don't don't block up the doorways. Don't block up the halls. It's like people need to step aside if they can't um, contribute to the change because it's got to happen. It's got to happen now. Young people. You know, in the Northwest, who live in this beautiful environment, who are out in the forest all the time and see the mountains and the ocean here and the orcas, they know that it's a very precious thing, this Earth, and that especially on Earth Day, they're going to be thinking about how what we can do to get the political leaders who say they represent us to actually listen to us. Now, I know Jay Inslee has done a pretty good job of that. Um, that's always been at the, one of the, you know, at the top of his list. Pramila Jayapal has been good on that issue. Shama Sawan, of course, 
supports a green um, economy along with a lot of labor unions because of the, the amount of work that it could create and the higher wage jobs it could provide. Um, but, you know, the young people in Seattle, I think, are, are, are more frustrated maybe than they are in other parts of the country, not because we have less progressive uh, representation in politics here, but because they have less tolerance for um, people who want to move to the center or the or the right of center when they know that these progressive issues are the ones that are going to address the real problems we're facing in the world, not some um, corporate bankers, you know, investment portfolio or, you know, stockbrokers and Wall Street. What they want to see is they want to see uh, an economy that supports working people and young people that allows them to get an education and raise a family and have decent health benefits for their children and get somewhere and not just be minimum wage workers for the rest of their lives waiting for the people at the top to listen to them and finally pay attention because as as James Lee said and I'll repeat it again the sooner we turn over uh, the halls of government to the young folks in this state the better off everybody's going to be because they get it yeah, I agree with you. And I'm actually for uh, lowering the age uh, for people to vote to 16 and uh, in getting high school kids involved. Uh, I think that would be a great way for them to go into adult life, whether they uh, get a college degree or not, uh, to understand their roles uh, civically. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for it and, and continue to educate folks. Hey, you know, we just got a couple of minutes left here, Mark. I, uh, I must tell you, you know, summertime is coming. I know it's been pretty gray in Seattle over the last last uh, uh, few weeks as uh, I've been hearing you and seeing a little bit of clips there from Seattle. Um, bands playing outside, you know, we're still, you know, dealing with, I, I saw that uh, Mr. Fauci was talking today about, you know, wearing a mask inside, uh, you know, at certain, uh, certain venues and so on and so forth. Uh, is there a movement to do a lot of things outside that might have been inside, you know, in the air condition, although Seattle doesn't really, you know, have much humidity uh, than what I know and uh, the times I've been there. But um, is there, you know, just let's just see if we can find a way to, to have events outdoors and, you know, if people want to wear masks, they can, but it's not as necessary as it is indoors in terms of, you know, setting up all these uh, uh, different, um, different, you know, music venues uh, to hear some of, the, some of the great music that your city has? Well, we have, you know, a new group called the New Rising Sun, which is a team of uh, concert promoters who took over Bumbershoot, and that includes people like Stephen Severn from Numos, which is a major club here in Seattle, um, and Greg Lundgren and Joe... Paganelli, they're they're all people who have been big inside the in the music industry in Seattle and promotion, and they're going to try to get they're going to try to revive um, Bumbershoot, but as of now there are still going to be less festivals than normal, and there will be um, there will be restrictions. Uh, I you know I know the government list uh, the state government and in Inslee. Uh, listed the, the mask mandates, but you know what? A lot of people are still wearing them, and Good. I think that people are very independent-minded here, and they're not going to wait for their elected representatives to tell them what the smart thing to do is. Um, so I think people are playing it by ear. There's still going to be less festivals than we had in the past as people try, kind of try to figure out, you know, what is this new norm? Um but there will be some, and there may have there, there may have to be more spontaneous outdoor concerts in Seattle this year by bands and people who just decide to set up somewhere. And hopefully, you know, the city and the, the police department will be liberal in their management of that and allow that to happen because um, people haven't had a chance to organize a lot of festivals. There will be some though, and I think they'll they'll get bigger as time goes on. And this year is just one of those times where. Um, people are trying to figure it out. Some clubs still have restrictions. Some don't. Some people, most people are still wearing masks indoors and things like that. Um, so I think we're cautious. And if you go see the crack in here, you'll see a lot of people wearing masks. And even if, if you go to a, 
club. I think it makes so much sense, uh, Mark. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, I know if I was going to a sporting event, I don't, I haven't been in a while uh, since the pandemic. But I know if I was going to, to a Bruins game or a Celtics game, you know, uh, I would be wearing a mask, and I'd be wearing an N95 too. Uh, I think everyone should in in the inside and in outdoor. You know, less less of a concern. But if you're going to be in an outdoor crowd and somebody's going to be two feet from you, I would uh, yeah. I would consider that too, maybe as as another possibility. Better to be safe than sorry, right, my man? The people are still rocking the house, though. The Black Tones are touring the West Coast. My band, MTC, and the Rebel Saints is coming up with an EP. So things are happening, Jeff. Seattle's still rocking. There's no doubt about that. People are actually hey. going to the shows.